Uh, hey. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start the recording, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'll do like a short intro, and then we'll we'll get going on it. All right. All right. All right, so welcome everybody to the latest uh, San Francisco Shock AMA. Today we have Dante and Sleepy here, and we've you guys have been asking questions over the last few days, and uh, we're going to try and go through and answer about as many as we can. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started with the first question, which is a no, general one, which is, uh, what games did you play before Overwatch, and I guess for Dante, we can say before Minecraft. Okay, well, let me tell you, I played Call of Duty on console. I was kind of a gamer. It's pretty kind insane. Of, kind of a big deal, not gonna lie. Yeah, dude. Which Call of Duty did you prefer? Uh, I played MW2 a lot, and then I played MW3 a lot. I didn't like Black Ops, though. That game was buns. All right, what about you, Sleepy? Uh, I played a lot of games with my brother when I was younger, but I'm just going to skip past that shit because that's like old games. Uh, Whoa, don't played... swear. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I played uh, League, Counter-Strike. Uh, I played Call of Duty as well. Overwatch as well, Terraria, Blade and Soul. Stuff like that. So, the, most of the general popular games that were around at the time? Yeah, Counter-Strike, stuff like that, yeah. Pretty much anything that was popular. Yeah. All right, um, so this next question is uh, about the shock skins. So someone was asking, what is your personal favorite SF shock skin? Well, we don't have them, so I don't know. <laughs> like I've never used them in game because we haven't done that yet, but. Even on like the, because whenever I if whenever I spec you guys, you guys have those on. Do you not see them like yeah. actually? No, we, we, we don't see them in game. Them. Only oh, spectators see them. It's I'm a little unlucky. A little unlucky. I'm, I'm sure you've you've had the but, chance to look at them there. Yeah, yeah, judging off like the Twitter banner, I don't know. Yeah, there's I don't know like there's not really a favorite, but I don't know probably Tracer just because she's my favorite hero. You know. Uh, let me do a quick Google search real quick. SF Shock Anna. Let me see what this looks like. Ooh. All right. I, I dig that. I'll say the Anna. All right. <laughs> Big player. <laughs> so you're best just going with your mains. I respect that. All right. Next question is, uh, when and how did you decide that, decide that you wanted to play DPS for Dante and support for Sleepy? So Sleepy, you can go ahead and go first for that. Uh, I play support in like every game I play. So like in League, I was like a hard support main and like diamond so i played dps in season one of overwatch but after that i was like eh, anna's pretty fun i'll play anna and then i just played support from then on out um i didn't really play dps i played Z i played only zarya season one and two and i started playing for denial as an off tank player but i still played dps in comp because i thought it was more fun than off tank in comp because i don't like playing off tank unless i have like good teammates but yeah after that I eventually started playing DPS for our team when we cut a player. And yeah, we picked up spaces off tank instead. All right. Um, so moving on. Uh, Dante, someone asked, has Minecraft helped you in any aspects of Overwatch? Well, I mean, I guess it got me used to the mouse and keyboard. But not really. I, I don't know. I think I'm kind of just naturally good at games. Like, even when I play, like, an iPhone game, you already know I'm pog champing it. Like, Tetris? Ooh. My Tetris game is... Man, this is a solid, dude. Plans, dude. Uh, <laughs> every, <laughs> every airplane ride, I just grind Tetris. <laughs> Holy shit. I guess the real, the real question, this will be my own little question for you. Uh, what's, what's your, what's your guys' opinion on RuneScape? Because we, we seem to pog always champ. talk about that once we do these. Honestly, honestly, a pog champ. It's pretty bad, but <laughs> <laughs> I played it. I played it in fourth grade, and uh, yeah, I played RuneScape since I, I was like I retired it like eight. So <laughs> every night I go in Super Zoom, I'm, I'm like we just hang out and you're just playing RuneScape. I'm like, come on, bro. 
It's pretty fun. I love RuneScape. I think it's Dante, you, game. you are the first one that does not like RuneScape out of the people that we've done this with. It seems like everybody, <laughs> everybody on Shock loves that game for some reason. Dude, it looks worse than Minecraft. Holy. Damn, that's toxic. That's, okay. All right. Uh, so moving on. Uh, someone asks. Are you guys comfortable or more comfortable just practicing the meta, or do you guys enjoy trying out new or experimental things to play? I mean, all I'm going to say is I have an Anna only Smurf right now. Well, I, yeah, yeah, in comp and stuff, I like playing random heroes because it's kind of fun. And then, like, the other team loses to it because people aren't too big brain in comp. But in, are, are you talking about, like, team environment, like, in scrims? Uh, or? Both, really. Well, in scrims, I feel like we have this problem where we try something new. And we just get dominated because we don't, like, practice it at all or, like, talk about it before. So we don't know how to play the comp. And then people are like, oh, this comp sucks because we didn't play it correctly. So we kind of, like, shut that stuff down. All right. Uh, next question, going back a bit towards when you guys were first trying out for the shock. Uh, someone asks, how was the application process to get into the shock? So, uh, Dante, why don't you go ahead and start for that? Well, my, mine's a lot different than Sleepy. Like, I kind of, I came in way later. Like, he was trying out for NRG, not Shock, yeah, I think. I was, right? part of, I was part of the original NRG roster, like Hard Blue in them. And them but, lot. but it was kind of like open trials. Not open trials, but there were like 30, 40 people trying out. And we just did like custom game versus each other, 66. And we like cycled people in and out. And if they liked you, then you'd play more. Like, if they like thought you were a good player and stuff, you'd play more. And yeah i think it was pretty fun i don't know I, I like playing with new players like that's something i really like like pugging and stuff i enjoy that a lot because like you get to see different play styles like different comms all that stuff so sleepy uh do you want to touch on yours anymore or just uh leave uh, it at i pretty much just came from the original energy roster so yeah that's one thing that a lot of people out. don't like don't i did really have the tryouts realize. that everyone else did as well like the, the SF Shock ones, like he was talking about, were the 12 mans. I did those as well, but I was already like pretty much just grandfathered in from the energy roster. Yeah. All right. So, next question is when you guys hang out in real life, uh, do you call each other by your gamer tag or by your real names? I know that doesn't really work for Dante. Like, you obviously people call you Dante no matter what, but do you call uh, Dak Dak? Call me sleepy. Yeah. Yeah, we usually call each other by our gamer tags. For everyone, or is there are there any exceptions? Uh, Sinatra, I call him Jay usually. That's about it. It helps for uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Baby Bay and IDDQD both are named Andre. Slightly different spellings, but that's... and Nevix is named Andreas. Yeah, so, Andreas. Yeah. So we we have three Andre variants on the shock, which is kind of horrible. Which makes sense that people will call them by their gamer tags, because otherwise yeah. it would uh, it would be kind of hell to figure out who's who. All right, I'm not actually sure who this next question is for, I th so I'm just going to throw it out there and one of you can take it. Someone asks, how old were you when you first started playing soccer and did you play competitively? I think that's that's for you, Dante. Yeah, yeah. I was, I think I was like kindergarten, or maybe it's first grade, I don't, no, no, I think it was like kindergarten though. It was, it was after preschool, but it was kindergarten. Yeah, I, I played rack and then I think I played rec in first grade too, and then in second grade I started playing travel soccer. Mm, yeah. So continuing on the soccer train, what were you guys rank in Lucio Ball is another question. So if you did the competitive Lucio Ball. Uh, I got top 500 in it. <laughs> Sleepy, did you touch the game mode? Uh, <laughs> I got like 4k and then I quit. Dude, I needed the player icon. It was pretty boring. <laughs> what was what was the cutoff for top 500 in that? Uh, I don't know. I think it was like 4100. I, I think I would have been top 100 had I played enough games, but when I realized you had to play 50 games to actually qualify for top 100, I kind of just... Didn't. Yeah, that took so long. It was so uh, bad. Yeah, that was a hard pass for me. Yeah. All right. Sleepy, next question's for you. 
which is uh, how well do you think Moira will play into the Overwatch League? Do you think she'll be picked often or on rare occasion? And I suppose you can do this also pre pre Mercy nerfs, post Mercy nerfs. In okay, regards to the question, nerfs, pre Mercy nerfs will never see her unless like it's like a two CP stall situation where Moira is like decent because she has an ability that can make her invulnerable and hide. So you'll see her in stall situations. It's about it before Mercy. After Mercy, I'm not sure. It depends on if Mercy is gutted or not. I hope Mercy dies, to be honest. Sorry if I offend anyone with that, but I don't like her. She's boring and very just not fun. So if if Mercy dies after these nerfs, you might see Moira. I hope you do, because I think she's really fun. Uh, but I can't be sure, because I, I still feel like Mercy's going to be 100% pick rate after this nerf still, because it's hard to believe that she'll be gone. Yeah, she's still like, I think she'll still be pretty strong. Yeah, she still has yeah, the red still there. Yeah, certain maps and certain like game modes, maybe. Or, I don't know. I don't think she's gonna be used in Koth at all. Like that's definitely she's just gonna be eliminated from that, unless it's Fair Mercy. She might be used, but she's. I think other comps will be stronger than Fair Mercy. But yeah, she still might be played because like just bringing someone back to life is really strong. Like you can fix their mistake by resing. Yeah, I, I commented on this with Baby Base uh, AMA, but I remember we were looking at some data from scrims right after the Mercy like Mercy rework patch hit, and like everybody's deaths just skyrocketed all across the team. Like everybody just started dying more. And it's it was yeah, uh, it, it promotes it promotes like dumb and aggressive play because you can yeah share. like literally if the other team um all right so say you're in a situation it's like last point of a map. And the other team uses their Valk, and you save your Valk, you'll win the next fight. Like, basically, no matter what. Like, you can just lose the one fight, waste 30 seconds, and then the next fight, you literally just win with Valk. Like, it's pretty broken. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so next question going towards the Overwatch League teams. Uh, how do you think the inaugural season will do, and who do you think will stand out the most in the season? Was it talking about team-wise or player-wise? Uh... Let's start with teams. Um, I definitely think London will pop off. We've been streaming them a lot, and they're a really strong team. Um, I think Seoul is also insane, too. I think those two are like a tier above everyone. But then the rest of the teams are all pretty... I think anyone can win against anyone. Sleepy, your thoughts? I think... The Korean teams, of course, like Seoul, London, and New York are going to just... Oh, yeah, New York's pretty sick, too. Yeah, New York is really good now that they have Jonak. Jonak is so fucking good. Is Whoa, there, I think the, I think PG those stream! Teams, I think those Korean teams are really good. And then, uh, contrary to popular belief, I think everyone else after that is extremely close. Like how everyone puts like Philly and Boston and all them at the bottom. Like, no, everyone's pretty close. So do you think uh, in that side... Do you think there's a noticeable gap between the Korean teams and the rest of them? Yes. Or do you... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Dante, do you feel like the same? Spit, spit yeah, yeah, yeah. A level, yeah, level you, above, like, NA teams. You can definitely feel it when scrimming them. Like, they, like, everything they do just has a reason, and it's, like, I don't know, super hard to verse them. Like, you'll just be like, wow, how did our, like... Uh, uh, I'm a Tracer player, so like maybe I'll be like fighting their Zen, I kill their Zen, and then like my whole team's just dead. I'm like, whoa, how did everyone just disappear? But then screaming an NA team, I'll, I'll like I'll kill their Zen, and there's like our team will still be alive against an NA team because like I don't know, they just can't finish okay. things off faster. NA Omega lol. <laughs> All right, so the next question has to do with the. Uh the unannounced hero that's coming out. It's just a general question of what what do you want out of the next hero for Overwatch? Uh, I want another off tank hero because they haven't came out with an off tank hero. They've came out with a main tank, two DPS heroes, two supports. I think it'd be really silly to put another defense hero, like a builder hero, because like most of those heroes are considered troll picks most of the time. And there's no way to make them really meta because like they're just niche i don't know they're weird heroes and if they're overpowered then like season two may that was super overpowered you got mail in like eight shots and it's just busted when a hero like that it can impact the game that much sleepy what, what do you want out of the next hero <sighs> i 
dude. I just want Mercy to be gone. I just want them to completely rework Mercy and make her a different hero. <laughs> that would be a, that'd be a great new hero, honestly. <laughs> just remove Rez and just create like a I don't know, like I honestly think Mercy could be something cool, like a Janna style hero from League, where like your ultimate is like it just pushes everyone away and it heals inside of it. Like that'd be sick. It makes Mercy completely like different, and Rez isn't her name anymore. So. I don't know. I don't really know what to expect from a new hero because they just give us a new support. So I don't really care what the next hero is. <laughs> Being honest, I don't like tanks, and I don't really care. I don't really play DPS that much. Yeah, I don't know. I think it just makes sense for it to be an off tank since they haven't introduced an off tank, and they've introduced almost every other type of hero. Yeah. All right. Also, All right. I think like the off tanks, like the only viable or not viable, but the only meta, like hard meta for the last year, has been Diva. She's been hard meta the last year. Like sometimes there's opportunities to run Hog or Zarya, but for the most part, it's almost always Diva. So maybe if like the other off tank was good against Diva or something, we could shut down Diva. I don't know. All right. So the next question is for Sleepy, and it's a general question about uh, basically getting dove as Zen. It's do you ever go into like or how do you not go into a panic when you're being chased down by like a tracer or dove by a diva or what have you? Uh, I mean, I've played the game for a long time. I've been dove thousands of times. So after a while, you kind of just get used to it and you're like, yeah, whatever, I'm probably going to die here. Or you can use your brain and outplay them. It's not really nothing to pan anything to panic about. It's definitely the meta. So you're going to have to get used to getting dove on every fight. It's kind of how it is playing Zen. All right, so next question is uh, for both of you. And it starts off with saying, as both of you are fairly young players in the league, how do people around you, like your family or friends, react when you tell them that you're a professional Overwatch player? Uh, my family is generally very supportive of it. Yeah, my family was cool about it. And they were, like, them. happy for me. Yeah. Uh, most of my immediate family was, like, very happy about it, but I don't really talk to much of my other family that it, because, like, most of my family doesn't live in Florida where I'm from. They live in Kansas, so I don't really talk to them a lot. So I'm sure my parents have told them, but I never really personally interact with them that much. All right, next question is, what would you be doing if you weren't playing Overwatch professionally right now? Probably be playing ranked, streaming. Probably streaming and attending college. Yeah, actually, I'd be in college right now, probably, if I had class. I actually, no, today's Sunday. I don't... Yeah, I don't know. But I would probably be streaming Overwatch, because I have a big stream. And I could just grind that, which would be fun. Better playing contenders. <laughs> of course. All right, so next question is, what is your favorite Overwatch League team, except for Shock, of course? New York. Uh, probably Valiant because I have the most friends there. Like all my good friends are on Valiant. Sleepy, you saying New York because of uh, Jajonak, or? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Well, I know in our in our personal Discord, you renamed yourself to like Kakonak, which I assume is a reference to that. <laughs> it's Kakonak. Yeah. Well, Kakonak. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Next question has to do with if uh, someone asked, what's your opinion on other teams? So I'll just move along and ask that because we already talked a bit about the Korean team. So what do you, who in your opinion are the top three Western teams other than yourself? Hmm. That's all you, Sleepy. Dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> They're all so close. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's close. It's hard to like, I don't know. I think Boston might be one of the best. So Boston's you, you, really good. Um, Dallas is really good. And like, think... People memed a lot about Boston, but they're pretty insane right now. Yeah, I was I was about to ask, uh, do you guys not think that Dallas is like, a lot of people are putting Dallas in like second or third. Obviously, you think they're under the Korean team. So do you think they're fourth or do you think they're lower than that? Mm, I would put like Boston, Dallas, and like one of the LA teams at the top. I don't think Boston, I don't think Dallas is bad at all. I think Effect is a god. 
Yeah. I think, I don't know, I, I think Boston and Valiant are the two best Western teams, maybe? I don't know. All right, next question is for uh, Sleepy, and it's just a question for what are your top three anime? <laughs> God damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know how to choose favorites. It's difficult. Well, I mean, you can at least say the, the one that your picture is based off of, I'm sure. Uh, ReZero is definitely a good one. Uh... <laughs> Dude, I don't know. ReZero is good. Uh, Kyokai no Kanata is really good. Koei no Katachi, Your Name, the movies, those are really good. Both of those last year movies, that's about it. All right. Those are all good. So, uh, next question is for both of you, which is why do you guys rarely face cam stream? I don't know. It just feels weird. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I'm ugly. Well, Sleepy, you, you more often do, uh, like, hand cam streams than you do, uh, like, face cam. At least you did that back before you moved to the the house. Yeah, because my keyboard's beautiful, my face is not. You'd ra rather show your keyboard than your face? Yeah, my keyboard is definitely something else. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question is, who do you think is the best support in the league? J. Jarnak. <laughs> All right, Dante, yeah. Dante you, you agree? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's hard because different teams have different play styles. Like, I feel like New York, like they play around Jay Jonek a lot. Like, they're like centered around him, and not all teams are like that. So maybe flex supports can't shine as well. But like, I think some of the best are like Beatos in, uh, Kareev, even though he's playing main support for Valiant. I think he's a better Zen than Unco, but monk ass, monk ass. maybe Kareev has a better Mercy, so that's why he's playing Mercy. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in, like on the fire right here. Do you think they're those those guys are all better than Rijay Hong? Uh I haven't. We've only scrimmed sold like once or twice. I don't know. We haven't haven't versed them much, so hard to tell. I think Jay Hong is a very consistent support. I don't think his Zen is super outstanding, but I think his Ana is definitely still God tier. I, I think if you put it in terms of Zenyatta's, because that's the hard meta right now, I don't think he stands out as much as like J. Jonak or Kariv or someone, or like Hagopun. Like those Zens are like really good. Yeah, Hagopun's sick too. Well, moving on to the next question. Uh, how do you manage the pressure of playing this uh, Overwatch competitively? Does it, does it ever like get to you? Like, you're talking about just like competitively, like as in comp or uh, scrims? I think, I think or just like in general. In uh, I, I imagine mm. maybe it had the question has to do with the like the XQC stuff that happened like a few weeks ago or something like that. What, what happened with XQC? Oh, just like where he had like the like br just breakdown on stream. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You just, you just can't, like, overdo it. Like, that dude scrims, like, eight hours probably a day and then goes home and streams for, like, 12. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yeah, doing, doing anything, like, 20 hours a day, you're gonna, like, you're gonna die. Like, that's ridiculous. You just have to, like, limit yourself. You don't, like, like, sure, we play Overwatch outside of scrims and we scrim still, but, like, we're not playing 12 hours outside of scrims. It's a lot. We do other stuff, too. So who, what, what member of SF Shock would you guys say has the best fashion sense? Definitely me. I don't know. What kind of question is that? I mean, I mean, I answered it. Sleep, yeah, sleepy. Sure. Yes. You, Why not? Sleepy. You name is Sleepy. Yeah, Sleepy's uh, pretty sick. Pretty, pretty pop champ. Not gonna lie. Is the is the fashion sense purely from the quality of your keyboard, Sleepy? Maybe. Is the no. the keyboard is the secret? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So next question is for uh, Dante. And what up? Uh, who do you think are the best tracers in Overwatch League? I feel like all the tracers are pretty good. It's hard to rate them. 
because everyone has different play styles. Like, Sebi Ube, like, he, like, plays a more defensive tracer. Like, he protects J. Jonak because they, like, play really strongly around J. Jonak. And then Striker is, like, the opposite. He's, like, in your face, like, on your flex support 24-7. And then, like, someone like Effect. I, I feel like Effect, like, you won't really notice him that much, but then all of a sudden, he'll kill your whole team. Like, they all have different play styles, and they're all, like, really good. So, yeah. I suppose I could, so, you it's, could hard, also it's hard to put a best one. I, I can't really put a best one, but there's a lot of really, really good tracers. Like, almost every single team has a really good tracer player. Sleepy, I'll actually ask you the same question, since I know you deal with tracers a lot. Uh... Which ones give you the most uh, trouble? We it's can also say. extremely difficult because, like, like Dante said, there's different playstyles of tracer. Like, effect is someone who doesn't hard tunnel zens, but he'll kill my entire team. So I think I'm doing fine in the fight. I don't die. Tracer doesn't come for me, but we lose the fight still because effect kills like four people. But then there's someone like Striker who just hard tunnels Zenyatta's all game and just owns me. Striker's like Striker's probably like one of the best tracers that like just killing Zenyatta's. Uh, Profit's pretty good. Bird Ring, they're both really good. Uh, most of the Korean tracers are insane. Sebi always is one that doesn't play super aggro either. He plays pretty passive. So I don't really notice what he does, but he does a lot for his team. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next question is Would you rather solo queue or duo queue? And why? I don't know. I It kind of just depends. Like, I like duo, or I like duo queue sometimes, but like. At the night games, like, night games is when all the Overwatch League players are playing. Like, I'd rather just solo queue. I don't know why. I just feel like it's better to solo queue. Like, But during the day, if, like, the games are really bad and there's no other pros playing, duo queue is probably more favorable. Uh, as a support play, I'd rather just duo queue. But I generally just solo queue. Because <laughs> I don't have anyone to duo with. So I would prefer duo, but solo is generally how it goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like duo queue with a support is kind of uh, bad because like there's so many mercy mains that literally can't play anything else. So your support duo normally has to go DPS, and it's kind of just not optimal if you do that. It's, it's, Unless it's, you're playing with someone like Kareev who played DPS before he played support and is just insane at DPS as well. A lot of yeah, like a lot of in GM and top 100, it's a lot of like support mains that don't play anything else so like i don't even get to play support at the time i have to play like tank or dps yeah because like letting a mercy main go play dps is gonna be among us because mercy's like mercy's skill set and the asset she requires to be played is nothing like any other hero it doesn't require aim or anything so the only other hero your skill translates to on mercy is like symmetra <laughs> that's about it so you don't really <laughs> have to play anything else so you generally have to just fill and play something else like tank Alrighty. So next question, I can kind of tell where this person's bias lies. Their name is uh, Val V2, and they ask which which LA team do you think is stronger and why? Do you do you actually see them as rivals because they're from the other California team, or they're kind of from California too? I don't really see them as rivals, but I think it's a hard question to answer because I think I think Valiant is stronger at like a Tracer Genji dive, because, you know, they have, like, extremely good players at that specific comp. But I think Gladiators is overall more flexible. So, it depends on the meta, honestly. Yeah. Like, Gladiators uh. has an extremely flexible team that can play, like, any comp. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. But I think Valiant... I think Valiant's the same way, to be honest. Like... Maybe when they get space, like, Envy can play DPS as well. Like, the guy, like, in ranked, he literally plays everything at, like, a top level. Like, he's their off-tank player right now. But I could see him moving to DPS, because, like, he's, like, a true flex. He's, like, Tavik almost, I think. Like, you see him playing Doomfist, McCree, Tracer, Genji. Like, he plays everything in ranked. So if they had him on DPS, I think they'd be able to flex anything. And they'd make them really flexible. And, like, he could even play off tanks. So if there's, like, a triple tank meta. Yeah. And, like, agility has a sick hog. Like, I think they can play everything. All right. So next question is from Jay. And he asks, uh, who would be the best at a San Francisco Shock arm wrestling match besides Dak? 
ABBA. Dak. Dak just <laughs> Dak. <laughs> Besides Dak, it's still Dak. <laughs> yeah, still Dak. Is, is any nobody's Dak comparable to Dak? No, no, I think Bebe could. Bebe works out a lot. Yeah, Bebe is pretty strong. So the the finals would for sure be Dak versus Baby Bay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question. I hope you guys can have better responses than Super and Sinatra did, because they they both kind of uh, monk ass their way out of this one. Which was what? Uh, what's your favorite Power Ranger? Monk I don't even know their names, dude. What the? You can just give a color. I like the green one because Genji has a green Power Ranger skin. Sleepy, are you, are you just going to monk ass your way out of this one? I think I'm lagging. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're lagging too hard? You can't You can't yeah, say a color? I, I can't answer this one. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Well, Sleepy, I, I, hope, you're, I hope you stop lagging because the next question is, what tips do you have for an aspiring Zen main? Whoa, dude, my internet's so much better now. Uh, Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just play Zen a lot. I don't know. <laughs> There's people always ask how to play like like what are some like Zen tips and stuff. You really just have to like watch pro players play Zen. Like go watch Jonak stream, go watch my stream, Monko's stream, watch any Zen player and just copy what they do because we do everything for a reason. Because the heroes, like it's it's a glass cannon hero, so it's really easy to just die. So you have to like watch what we do and we understand that we do everything for a reason. And you have to just understand that you're gonna die to anything. You can't play super aggressive because we'll just die. But you can't play super passive because you won't do anything. All right. And then continuing on the tips train, uh, Dante. Someone asks, "What do you think is the best way to learn when to melee with Tracer?" Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really like it. Kind of matters, but it doesn't. Like, there's some chasers that literally spam melee. Like, I think Save Yuli is a good example. Like, if you ever one v one him, you notice how much he melees. Mistakes is also a tracer that melees a lot. But then there's also some tracers that don't melee that much. Like Sinatra melees a ton too. Um, but like I, I don't think effect melees that much. So it, it doesn't really matter. But it's pretty good. Like sometimes you shoot a little bit, blink melee, and then shoot the rest of your clip. That's like I feel like Sabi Uli does it a lot from one day owning him and mistakes does it a lot. Or sometimes you just do it at the end of your clip. You just melee at the end of your clip. But yeah, it's just preference, I guess. And it's, it's situational too. Like if you don't have a lot of blinks, you don't want to blink melee. It's really bad because like you'll end up dying because you don't have blinks. But if you have full blinks, then blink melee is really strong. Most most of the tracers that I face, they always uh, blink melee or like they'll melee after their clip. Yeah. So just from like just based off Korean tracers, they just they melee after the clip. Mm -hmm. I think it's different for like in, in Tracer 1v1s, you want to like do it mid clip sometimes. Yeah. But like if you're trying to finish off a Zen, zen yeah, yeah, because there's a good chance you get the Zen to like 1 HP, but you can't finish him. So, like, the whole point of Blink Melee is so you don't have to reload. Like, reloading takes like a second, and if you're wasting a second, then he could get healed or he could headshot you or something. So, you want to Blink and Melee just to insta finish them. So. Yeah, it just depends on who you're fighting and your blink usage, like how many blinks you have, and it depends on a lot of things, but it's hard to like tell you how to play it. You just gotta start doing it and get a feel for it. Yeah. Alright, so next question is, how many hours a day would you say you spend in Overwatch? Uh, I mean, like, Physically in the game, or like doing other things as well, like doing I, I review and stuff like it, that. Anything related towards the, like doing like map review scrims, all those stuff together, like ladder scrims and map review okay. together. Probably like twelve hours a day. Twelve hours? What the? This dude's yeah. crazy. I watch all right. a lot of odds. <laughs> I probably like eight, ten hours, but. It kind of depends, because, like, we, we get to the uh, office, or, like, Burbank Studios, that's where we scrim at. We get there at, like, noon most days, and we normally go home at 8. Like, we, like, get there a couple hours earlier, like, we eat, we, we just hang out, we go over some VODs, we do that kind of stuff, and then we scrim at, like, probably, like, 3, and then, or, no, no, it's, like, 2. And then from 2 to 4, we're scrimming, and then we have an hour break, 
and then we scrim from five to seven and we kind of like hang out after like we go over some maps if we did like if we had any questions we go over some maps so that's like eight hours right there and i like to stream but like it's not like eight hours of consistently playing like we, we like chill out like the vod stuff is really chill like we just like hang out in our chairs and like just like kind of discuss stuff so yeah it's not like 12 hours of actual grinding but yeah like yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it's like if you're considering like hard playing the game and stuff like that, it's probably like it's eight like eight hours. hours. Yeah, four hours of scrim and then like four hours of stream. And stuff. Yeah, if you consider vod review and stuff, then definitely like twelve because I watch a lot of like Jonak vods and stuff. Next question is for Dante. A lot of people have been asking like variants on this, so I, I'll just come up with like a middle ground question, which is what's the difference between your tracer and Sinatra's tracer in play style? Uh, I think I play a lot more passive than him. He plays, like, a lot of... I don't know. Maybe it's because he hasn't, like, scrimmed in a while, but, like, I, I used to play really aggressive, and, like, Sleepy probably knows this, but it doesn't really work anymore. The Korean Tracers punish it really hard. Like, like they just go with their Zen. Like, their Zen just orbs them, and they kind of just, like, poop on you. But, yeah, I, I used to play really aggressive, like Sinatra, but now I play, like, more passive. I always play by sleepy, so then I can like get orb and just fight people. Cause like there's no point in fighting a fight that you don't have an advantage in. On tracer, you want to always like fight a fight that you have an advantage in. And orb is the easiest way to have an advantage in a fight. Just watching chat and everybody's memeing about Zen orbs now. <laughs> no, I'm serious, right? Sleepy, like literally every tracer in Overwatch League, they have orb on them. Like, if you yeah. don't have orb, you're just throwing. Like, you're going to get destroyed. Yeah. Having orb on Tracer is, like, really good. It allows her to do, like, anything she wants. Like, it, when I first started playing for Shock, I don't really think I played with orb that much. But then me and Sleepy were, like, talking about it. We're like, yeah, that's actually so OP. And now we do it. Like, it's like, I'm always, not always, like, a good amount of the time I'm in LOS of him. And, like, orb's always on me. Because, like, sometimes people don't play in LOS of him. So, yeah, it's pretty good. So when you guys are warming up to play, what's your like general warm up routine to get to like get ready for scrims? Uh, I just warm up for twenty minutes. Like, do you sit in the practice range or do you play a comp game? Oh, uh, I play a custom game. I just set up a bunch of bots that can't do damage to you and get alt really fast. So I do like pulse bombs for like ten minutes. Like, basically one clip gives you a pulse bomb. So I just link pulse bomb and I practice that for like ten minutes. And now I do like five minutes on McCree and like five minutes on Genji because I want to get good at McCree, but I don't want to play him in comp because I'm like, I'm, I'm not that good at him. And like, if there's other Overwatch League players in my game, then they can probably play McCree better. Like, if I have Carpe in my game, like, he can definitely play McCree better than me. So I'd rather just play like a hero that we would most likely win with, like Tracer or Genji. But yeah. Sleepy, what about yourself? Do you, do, I know you play Osu. Do you do that to warm up, or yeah, do you play I Overwatch? Just, I just play Osu to warm up my wrist and like prepare for mouse movements, and then I'll just play like a comp game if I have time. If not, I just jump into scrims. Like Next question uh, is: We talked a bit about this before, but someone's asking: Is Boston the hidden gem in the Overwatch League? I think they're really strong. Yeah, I mean, if you consider it hidden gem because everyone shits on them and says they're bad, then yeah. But I think Boston's really good. Literally, Actually, Striker uh, is definitely gonna be one of the better tracers in the game, and people will realize that. I don't know. People play. like shit on them without even seeing them scrim. Like in the beginning, their scrims they were kind of bad, but now they're really good. Like they definitely improved a lot, and like they're a really good team. No. So another question is, this one's for Dante, and how is XQC as a teammate? Hmm, he's pretty funny. I like him. I like, <laughs> alright, there's some funny stuff he says. Like, uh, I don't, I don't think I should say stuff, but, like, after we win a map, he's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, he's not like he is on stream, but, like, he says some funny stuff, and I miss playing with him, to be honest. Like. He was, like, in, all right, in scrims, like, he would shit talk people. It was so funny. But then, like, in tournaments, like, he was the most positive player ever. Like, it felt weird. Like, like he was, like, he was so PMA. It was, it was weird. Like, 
He would be like the last person to tilt if we tilted, but we didn't really tilt in tournaments. So next question is a bit of a hypothetical one, which is if you could pick one character to always be meta, who would you pick? Anna. Uh, I don't really know. Tracer's been meta for like ever. And well, now my Tracer main, so. Yeah, I, I guess uh, I'll, yeah. I'll extend this question a little bit for a bit more prying. If you can make Sombra meta and like stay meta, would you would you be a Sombra main or would you be a Tracer main? I don't know. Sombra meta would kind of get annoying because like her kit is kind of dumb itself. Like you hack someone and they literally can't use like like a Reinhardt can't use a shield when you hack him. A soldier can't use his legs when you hack him. Like <laughs> how how does that make any sense? It, it doesn't make much sense to be honest. But I think it would be I think Sombra would be really fun, but I think it'd get pretty boring. After like a few months, it's probably the same case as Anna. There's things about the hero that's just completely stupid, but it's still a fun hero. Like I think Anna's Bionate is stupid. It shouldn't be an entire anti heal. It should be like fifty percent reduced healing. But I can't change the hero, so. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll um... shoot. I lost my train of thought there. Never mind. Oh, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, so. If you guys could choose uh, one team to be on other than Shock, who what team would you be on? New York. <laughs> you just want to be with J. J. Jonak? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, probably Valiant, because I have a lot of good friends there. I, I don't know, I just like their team. Like Everyone on the team is really chill. Yeah, as much as I like Jonak, I still like everyone else on that team as well. Like I'm pretty good friends with Sabi Obi. Then I think we're just about through all the questions. We'll finish up with this one, which is how do you guys uh, stop yourself from getting tilted in like comp queue? Like, how do you reset? Play Mercy. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> it's about the easiest thing. Dante, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna ask for a better, better answer than play Mercy. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Normally, I just I I don't even know what I do when I'm tilted. I just like the, the game's ruined. Like, just try again next game. Then we'll we'll finish it off with a bit of a funny question, which is who is the funniest shock teammate? Dak. Probably Dak. Dak or super. Yeah, Dak or super for sure. <laughs> super is a pretty funny guy. He actually gave me my name of K Konak. Feels good, man. All right. Well, I think we'll we'll go ahead and call the AMA there. Uh, thank you, guys, everybody, so much for tuning in and listening. And uh, we are. This was recorded, so we're going to be putting up the VOD uh, later on YouTube, same way that we did for the Super and Sinatra one. Uh, Sleepy and Dante, do you have any closing closing remarks? Later. I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> sleep. Sleepy, sleepy. Of course. All right. Thank you guys so much. And we'll stop here.